or recording? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the uh, to the November Election Day meeting of Yarmouth Energy Committee. Um, I'd introduce members of the public. We have uh, Barry Mar Margolin, who's the um, um, coordinator of Yarmouth Climate Action Network, and we have T Yarmouth Town Engineer Amanda Lima, and uh, participating energy committee members include Steve Gavin, Marilyn Holly, uh, Sandy Cashin, Susan Starkey, and uh, Mike Duffy. And oh, because I'm not seeing Tara's picture, of course, um, town staff member Tara Monroe is with us as well. Um, I'd like to have a motion to approve a remote meeting. If anyone would so move. I'll make a motion to accept the remote meeting. Okay, second. Second. Okay, thank you. So all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And we are now joined by Sheila. Welcome, Sheila. Well, thank you. I tried to get on and it was just me. So I backed out and got back on. So anyway, sorry. Well, we, appre we appreciate that you didn't declare yourself a quorum and do wild things. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I apologize for being late. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Okay, I'll hand it over to you, Madam Secretary, for um, um, approval of minutes. Well, I recently sent out um, another version because they had been some edits to it. They, um, so I, I hope everybody did get that. And as far as I know, I took care of everything that was brought to my attention. Okay, um, any uh, further am amendments to the minutes? Are we good? Okay, could I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Thank you, Sandy. I'll second it. Uh, thank you, Susan. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, next is Cape Light Compact update. Um, we have a change in date for Cape Light Compact. Um, and that is that uh, um, the meeting that would have been on November 11th, except for the holiday, which was then moved to November 18th because of the holiday, but then turned out to be colliding with the um, um, Energy Advisory Council meeting at the state level is now tomorrow from 2 to 4.30. So if any of you want to uh, um, watch or take part, that's that's when it is. It's on Zoom, of course. Um, the big item on that uh, agenda is going to be the board vote on the uh, Rural Electricity Support Program. Um, that's going to be uh, a vote on uh, joining and then potentially a vote to execute the documents, including the loan agreement that will start the process that will make it possible to have um, Cape Cotters very soon be able to take advantage of low interest loan grants to get solar. Because go figure, we, we are as these definitions go, defined as a rural area. So we, we are allowed to take advantage of that. The other big news from the Cape Light Compact, I had asked um, after our Board of Selectmen meeting, um, I had asked uh, Cape Light Compact staff for some help in getting a concise orientation and description what it is that the Cape Light Compact and state incentives can do for new municipal buildings and emphasizing member municipalities. So, you know, town buildings were the official um, membership of Cape Light Compact. Uh, Margaret Song um, did put together a nice description and um, got online the very latest um, of the uh, Sorry, um, um, the very latest of the um, um, incentives for the municipal buildings, that's a recently changed piece on the website. So I sent you all earlier 
um, just a couple hours ago, an update on that that gives the description as an attachment, but that also gives the website if you mm -hmm. want to go and look at further details where they break everything down, you know, what they're willing to do for ventilation systems, what they're willing to do for lighting and so forth. And that, I think, will be the kind of thing that we should have in our minds um, in terms of pushing future buildings right at the pre-design stage before anybody does anything because um, there are these massive incentives and there's no point doing um, a less sustainable building um, long term when we could do one that would be more successfully sustainable. And it turns out the rewards for that may do a lot financially to cancel out any, any additional price. Okay, that's it for the compact. Steve, how are things with CVEC these days? Okay, um, I might uh, start out with the uh, battery at the uh, high school. Uh, we're in discussion with uh, the uh, Amoresco, who is the uh, group, uh, the company under contract with us. Uh, the, uh, it's been quite a while since we uh, initially uh, established a contract. So there is some, you know, updating that is going on. Uh, the state, of course, is uh, providing some providing some funding uh, for the effort. Uh, again, the uh, contract with the state is uh, being updated. The, they've been waiting for it. Uh, apparently, the uh, contract is in the mail. <laughs> so um, Maria Moresco is uh, pursuing that uh, through her contacts at the uh, state level. The, uh, we're uh, also uh, looking at, uh, well, the, uh, the senior center, I might update it on that. Uh, we're ACE, American Capital Energy is the uh, company that we've uh, contracted with on, uh, on that. Uh, we're looking at a, a variety of detail uh, issues with, with them. Uh, the uh, window in terms of the uh, SMART uh, program, and then the uh, Eversource interconnection, which shouldn't be uh, difficult. Uh, it's a rather, you know, relatively small installation, and it uh, is close to the uh, grid. And uh, I think that's, oh, the next meeting, uh, CVEC meeting is on uh, November 19th, next board of directors. That's basically it. And I think oh, one other thing, I don't know if I mentioned uh, previously, but uh, William Lake or Bill Lake of uh, Nantucket, he's the Nantucket representative. He's the new uh, chairman of the uh, board of directors of uh, CVEC. Uh, Leo has, uh, uh, Leo uh, Kakunis was the uh, uh, chairman and Leo still remains the uh, Harwich uh, representative on the board. And he's working cooperatively with uh, Bill Lake uh, during this transition period. That's basically it. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, we have any questions for Steve? No, but I have a question for you, Joyce, on the Cape Light compact. Okay. Did, uh, did you mention uh, low cost solo loans? Would those be available to Solarize Plus people? Yes, if they come through in time. Um, this is, um, it needs the board, um, <coughs> excuse me, approval to go ahead. Um, so we'll be tracking then two timelines, one with Cape Cod 5, assuming that we sign the loan documents tomorrow, how soon can that program be set up? And then the second one is, um, how soon at the federal uh, level the, um, the money can kick in. But given our delay with Solarize, it, it does seem that um, Solarize hasn't missed it because we're into 2021 by the time we start and have um, homeowners using it. So I think that's something that we should monitor because that's a kind of unexpected blessing of our tardiness. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so the next thing is, 
if Amanda has anything to report on town energy work, and, and Amanda, we know that some months there won't be anything to report, and that's fine, but figure we'll always have a slot for you if there's anything you want to throw in. Okay, great. No, I do have a, a little handful of updates for everybody. Uh, following up on the charging units, uh, we're looking to schedule the town hall uh, final tie over for the weekend of November 14th. Uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup here and there in regards to the early voting and not wanting to shut down town hall. Um, we have to do some repairs to the generator on site. So the contractor Maverick is gonna be bringing in a temporary gen generator and they're gonna help uh, with Eversource coordination to get that complete uh, before the winter. And then the rest of the work for the senior center and the golf course will you know, be wrapped up as well. And so that's the, the first project. Second one is the uh, jumping on to what Steve was mentioning for the CVAC projects. Uh, one of the big accomplishments in the last month was uh, the title company with DSD was going back and forth in regards to uh, getting insurances uh, because there was uh, some title discrepancies, but the town staff and everybody was able to provide what they need and they have approved that. So that project is going forward for our informal site plan review upcoming. And then, uh, Steve, I just wanted to ask you a quick question regarding the senior center in regards to the schedule, because I haven't seen an update on the schedule part um, in, and if there's anything you needed for town coordination items. So you have not seen that uh, schedule, I'm sorry. No, not yet. Okay. And, oh, sorry, just one, one more item. Last one is that uh, the annual report for green communities is due on Friday. So we've been working with Margaret uh, to get all that data inputted and that will be signed by Dan on Friday. We get copies of that. I don't know how to get that, but I can coordinate and find out for you. Yeah, it would be great. I'd like to, I'd love to see if there's been anything figured out about the 4% behavior change that we're supposed to try to help with. And Amanda, do, do you hear down there anything impacting the town meeting based on the governor's latest restrictions? I have not heard anything. I think it means that we have to be home um, and it can't go on late. Either that or it has to serve takeout food only after 9.30. It also, there's not supposed to be more than 10 people gathering, not 50. But it mm. sounded like there were um, <clears throat> differences made for religious and political get togethers. I'll find out oh. tomorrow. I have a meeting. Oh, good. I hope they do something different. We have a, we have a mole with Sandra. We have a mole. <laughs> Now, you, you just said that on broadcast, Mike. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> Think anybody watches these broadcasts? Well, you know, the interesting thing is they're now plugged in um, so that they run randomly um, on channel 18. Um, so that I think we have a whole audience of insomniacs, but I don't know how politically active they are. Okay, Mike, you want to take the floor with the um, annual operating plan updates? Okay. Uh, there are basically two parts to this plan. Uh, first one has to do with establishing baseline, and that would be for the total energy usage by electricity and gas within municipal, commercial and industrial and residential units and also the existing number of electric vehicles within the town. Second part has to do with then conducting outreach to inspire everyone to implement energy conservation, energy efficiency and renewable energy. Now, just like the Solarized Yarmouth, Solarized Plus Yarmouth effort, our plan is being impacted by the pandemic with respect to being able to reach out to energy users. So that part is going, well, it's not even starting. But uh, with regard to the baseline, I've established the following baseline usage data uh, for fiscal year 
2020, I have the electric usage by town departments, school facilities, residential, commercial and industrial, and even low income for a total of 163 million kilowatt hours. With regard to natural gas for fiscal year 2020, I have uh, data for town departments, school facilities, residential and non-residential. So they just don't uh, show an indication for low income, but the sum of that for fiscal year 2020 is 12, 12.9 million therms. So that's the baseline that uh, we will be measuring our progress off of uh, over the next five years, really. Now, establishing a baseline for the existing number of electric vehicles is going to be difficult, if possible at all. And I would defer it to Barry to see if there's anything that's happened along those lines. I think that um, the status hasn't changed until something is done at the state level to um, make that data available. It is simply doesn't exist in the state or any, any town. Right, uh, yeah. Which is uh, unfortunate because if we knew the electric vehicle owners in Yarmouth, we could use that to target people for our solar PVs and uh, air source type heat pumps. Mm. I think that um, Barry's research turned up that there weren't many yet. What well, was single figures, wasn't it? Do no, I, the, 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 the only information that we actually got was how many um, uh, rebates had been secured for electric vehicles in Yarmouth under the state's um, electric vehicle rebate program. And that was only 17, I believe. Um, but um, nobody thinks that uh, that's a comprehensive measure of how many electric vehicles have been purchased in a town because not every, it, the, you have to proactively seek the rebate. Um, uh. And they haven't been available throughout the time the EVs have been on the, uh, you know, in the market. So it, it's not a particularly meaningful number. Okay. Did I just see where the town is gonna to be setting up three charging stations open to the public? And if so, we could uh, put guards at each one of those and write down the license plate numbers of anybody that comes to charge it. Ooh. That's good. <laughs> Probably oh. get arrested for stalking. Uh. <laughs> hey, Mike, uh, Mike, Bob, welcome. I can Thank see your you. phone number, even though I can't see you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Bob, Bob would be a good one to stake out one of those charging stations. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I go by uh, the one in the senior uh, parking lot. I checked it out the other day. Just to see what one was look like, look like, and uh, it's given me the taste to think about buying an electric vehicle. Since I go to the senior center, even now that it's closed, quite often to do my garden. I don't think I'll be doing that through the winter, though. <laughs> I just got a, a note that Tara Monroe's microphone isn't working, so we can. We can wave to her, but she won't be able to answer us if we give her any hard questions or appoint her to any tasks that she does not want to be appointed to. I'll send okay. her the audio if she wants to join in like Bob. Okay, thanks, Sandra. See, Tara's on, picture is on. I think oh, Tara, hi. Hi, I, I had to restart my PC twice. <laughs> and it worked. You, so. you should get a Mac. <laughs> Well, I'm on a town PC. I don't know if they'd, uh, <laughs> so I'm in if you have any questions. Oh, thanks. Uh, we were, um, Mike was starting the uh, whole report on the um, uh, annual operating plan and he was giving um, figures for the whole town, you know, municipal, residential and business for um, um, kilowatt hours and therms. Um, 
and Barry gave a little bit about electric cars and the uh, the difficulty of um, until there's better um, record keeping at the state, figuring how many we actually have, but possibly 17 or more. Mike, what would what would you like a report on next? I know we have a couple people here who are listed on the report list. What do I want to report? Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Well, I, I don't imagine anybody has really done anything in terms of outreach, so. Oh, uh, I, I did a couple things. You, you oh, wanna hear? Well, sure. Okay. Um, under tasks number two and three, the energy efficiency outreach materials, conservation outreach materials, um, I got in touch with the compact and got us a good description of what they could do for municipal buildings. Um, that, that doesn't help um, of course, for uh, our, our main load, which is residential. But then um, I also, with uh, number six, um, sent that with an, um, a note, at, with, including my phone number, to the select board members individually if they, um, if they wanted to get in touch with me, if they had any questions about that. But that just seemed like a really valuable thing for um, people to know as we head into the town meeting um, with the petitioned article. And I suspect if I had, I would have done this a year ago, but some of the updates wouldn't have been there. I would have done it earlier had I realized that there was any chance of the town doing a building without taking advantage of all this free stuff. Thank you, Susan. You're the one who alerted us. You know, one, one thing that I'm going to bring up with regard to the Solarize effort, but it uh, pertains to the uh, Energy Committee plan as well. And that is, we could find out all of the people in town that have made use of the Cape Light Compact energy audit, we could again target those people for uh, either increasing their energy efficiency or from a solarized standpoint, uh, adopting the solar PVs of the air source heat pumps. Okay, so you want me to get in touch with uh, Maggie Downey and find out, you know, what the uh, protocol is on that? Yeah, it's their private information, but we'd be doing it for their own good. Would they share names and addresses? I don't think they do, but maybe we could have a communication that we would ask them to send out on our behalf. Okay. That's a great idea. Uh, Joyce, even if they could uh, quantify it in some way, uh, let's say 10,000 out of 20,000 uh, cones have had an audit. And maybe even by year, uh, we could uh, uh, see if some of them might need to be uh, updated or suggest that they're being updated. Okay, we, we do know that from the annual reports. We can tell you how many, um, well, how many residences and how many businesses not so many businesses um, have uh, have done audits, and what we can, for each year, um, and what we can't tell, although um, there is somebody at the compact who's been working on this, who got diverted to the rural energy program, and then will be a little bit freer um, once that is launched. Um, somebody was working on a rather elaborate data set about how many people um, actually followed through on things past the immediate free things. How many people got weatherization, insulation, um, how many people upgraded heating or hot water, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we would, you know, we were supposed to have this in August, but we would very soon have that kind of follow-up. We wouldn't have the names and addresses with that, but we'd have the, um, you know, the overall profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody want to report on any other items of the task list? Well, the website, um, I have no 
news and Angela, who is working on it, has not responded to me. Has she responded to you, Mike? Um, it was at least a week or so ago when uh, I know when I had told you she had not called me. I left two voicemails and she had not called me back and I think you sent her a note and she replied to that to me and um, I replied to that and have heard nothing again since. Okay. So what is her, I mean, what's her status? Is, is she a one person company that's working for the town or? I think she's a consultant for the company, I'm um, for, for the town and she's working with the town to update the website because um, it is definitely hasn't been updated and that's what's causing a lot of the issues with their website. So she has been trying to work with Civic Plus, trying to update it and get things in order and get everything so that it's uniform throughout the website. So she's a big piece of having the Yarmouth website up to date. And I guess we really don't have to do anything as yet because we're still on hold, but I will continue to work with her, try to give her a call tomorrow or this week. Well, it would be nice to get the web page up and running for Solarize. Now you're talking about the overall Yarmouth website. No, I'm talking about both because both. the Solarize Plus is on the Yarmouth site. Right. So she's trying to make all of that uniform I already have a page and a link set up for her. I gave her all the information. She just needs to upload it. So I'm not sure what's, what the holdup is. I'll, I'll give her a call. Okay, and check with the logo as well. Yes. Bob, is there any news on the senior center? Have they gotten fire pits so you can have outdoor consultations with your energy clients? No, but... Uh... I, a couple of weeks ago, I got a, um, a couple of weeks ago, I got a message from uh, Diane Kane asking if I knew anything about the, um, the senior center's interaction with Echo G. Uh, you will remember you oh, and I yes. attended a meeting there and and what the eventual outcome of that meeting was that the Echo G has set up a, a a monitoring system in the senior center. It's been there for a couple of years now, and um, Diane was not in on it in, in at the beginning, uh, uh, but she then when Echo G decided to put the monitoring system in. Um, she was put because she was the facility manager at the time. She she was in charge of that, and now Echo G is uh, is the the engineer that nice young man named Joel that we oh, met yes. is come is setting has set up a Zoom meeting for Thursday uh, that um, uh, to give us some the senior center some ideas about other monitoring tools, I guess, that they have that they, they're trying to sell us. I don't, I don't know. We, I, I'm not even sure we pay for it or how how it operates. Uh, I mean, this just sort of came out of, a, out of the blue to me from Diane, and she's now got me back in the loop, and I'm very happy about that. Um, and but I'm not sure if anybody from the town is involved because the town person then was rich. Um, huh? I, I was wondering if uh, I don't know who who it would be. Would it be Amanda uh, that might be from the town that might attend the Zoom meeting on Thursday? Uh, uh, I, I guess it's Diane's. Uh, call on it but uh uh i i i don't know uh but i will be attending this meeting and see what this monitoring is doing and 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 of what use it is to the uh to the senior center hmm. you know i think the town without an assistant town administrator doesn't really have anybody that that 
understand Napa consent, but I think he might nevertheless want to either be there since it's only a Zoom meeting or um, have somebody um, plugged in. Um, because I'd hate to think that because Rich is gone now that there's any possible chance that the, um, the head of that company thinks that the need for RFPs and that sort of thing is, is gone, that that was something particular to Rich, where it was oh. just something that had not been understood by the senior center. I think Diane is probably more wise about these things than, than Kathy was, uh, quite frankly. I mean, Diane is more of a bureaucrat than, uh, than, than Kathy ever was. Um, so I, I, I just saw this, this email. People keep sending emails to my Comcast uh, address, and I keep missing them because I, I get 10,000 political uh, emails a, a day, it seems, and, and, and I, I just don't get to flip yeah. through them. I got, I got this thing from Diane. Well, I read it today, but it was sent last week, uh, so last Wednesday, as a matter of fact which was the last time I looked at this particular, uh, you know, my Comcast email. So mm -hmm. I sent her a message saying, you know, do you think somebody from the town should be there? Uh, you know, um, why, don't, why don't you and I talk um, maybe sometime tomorrow about this? Because um, it, it does seem that that we need to think of some way to make sure the town is represented. Okay. Decisions maybe than just the senior center. Yeah, I'll try to. I'll, I'll try to call her. Uh, I mean, it was. You know, it was just as I say, just about an hour before this meeting that I that I saw this thing and gave her a quick response to to say that I would attend the meeting, and then then I realized. That November fifth is my date for my semi or every other year or every five year uh, energy efficiency uh, visit. <laughs> so, so I'm going to have rise engineers here on on Thursday morning, but I don't know exactly what I, what time. Uh, oh, well, and that's unless, that's of course the most important thing: an energy audit. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, I don't even know whether it's a virtual uh, visit or a real one uh, at this point. Uh, Which, whichever you prefer. Uh, did you request a particular kind at the time? I have, can't remember at all, uh, quite frankly. Uh, um, if you call so the 800 I, number, you, you, know, you can find out which it is. Because yes, presumably by now it's assigned. Yeah, I'll, I'll 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 make that call. That's the first call I will make tomorrow morning is to to get that straightened out. Uh, because if my Zoom, uh, you know, app is not working properly, then then I'm on I'm in real deep doo doo on Thursday because I have three th I will have three Zoom meetings scheduled. Mm. Wow. Well, we'll all think of you with sympathy on Thursday, Bob. Three in a day is a lot. Okay, anybody else have anything to say about their, the areas they're working on for the annual operating plan? Any updates? Just a, a quick comment, uh, and I guess this fits into the uh, solarized plan also, but uh, I was, I've been looking in and mainly on the internet uh, in regards to uh, charging stations. And uh, you get a, depending upon where you go, you get a variety of information. Some of it matches, some of it uh, doesn't. Uh, but I did get wind of the, uh, that uh, someone, uh, a person at the, uh, uh, basically the, uh, uh, not the town of Barnesville, but the, uh, the county has been uh, assigned 
to uh, compile all, all of the uh, charging stations and to uh, keep that up to date. So uh, what I'll do is pursue that. I'll go by the, uh, or contact the uh, uh, county uh, uh, administration and uh, find out who that person is. And hopefully at the uh, next meeting, I'll have some information for you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, okay, then one, one more comment. Uh, and Joyce, I sent you a, a quick picture of it, but uh, uh, just Walpole Woodworks uh, is on Willows uh, down by Route uh, 28. Uh, they have uh, black photovoltaic panels on their roof. And you, unless you look really hard, it, uh, it's not obvious that they have that, uh, those color uh, panels. Uh, but there, there are companies now that are offering, uh, and they have for a, a fair amount of time been offering colored panels. Mm. Uh, others, uh, there's another company, uh, it's a Dutch company that uh, offers uh, a different variety of colors uh, the, and images. They can uh, uh, deposit with ceramic ink, they can de deposit uh, uh, colors and images uh, onto uh, their photo voltaic panels. But if you go by uh, Walpole Woodwork, Woodworks, uh, just take a look at the uh, black panels. Yeah, I um, just went into my email and opened that. You know, they they seem to me to look enough like a roof that maybe, maybe that would be a way into the Old Kings Highway District for solar on the front of an establishment, totally black. Yeah, and as I say, the uh, this one company says that they can offer, you know, a variety of colors. Hmm. Yeah, you got to watch out for that with the old Kings Highway Commission. They only recently started allowing uh, people to use that ASIC uh, uh, false wood uh, uh, instead of uh, actual wood uh, for, you know, eaves and around 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 your windows etc before it had to be real wood so you know a a, a non-shingle roof <laughs> might be a no-no for them even if it looks real from the street so. mm. yeah i noticed it seemed to be quite a story today uh, you know, a break with tradition kind of story with that um, Cape Cod Times piece about the uh, Church of Christ in Sandwich being mm -hmm. allowed to get uh, the PVC siding. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm sure that, uh, that, uh, that that was a, a major issue. Uh, well, if it was in the newspaper, it certainly was. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well, I'm se sending everybody who's on this call um, a picture of what Steve sent, so you'll you'll have it. Um, anything else then, or, or Mike, would you say we're done with this article? I would say we are. Okay, then. Moving on, um, we've got the uh, update on the Cape and Vineyard Energize. Um, and two petitioned energy climate articles for the November 17th town meeting warrant. Um, remember that we spoke of those last time and um, there was a, um, an indication that people wanted them to be broached to the board of selectmen before there was an energy committee vote on endorsing them. Um, Barry, do you wanna talk a little bit about the articles as the Yarmouth Climate Action Network coordinator? Sure. Um, if I, there are the two items uh, coupled. On Cape and Vineyard Energize, there's a, a group of us are working with Maggie Downey to um, design a program that pretty much looks like Solarize for the entire Cape and Vineyard, but it's actually at this point being planned for 2022, primarily so that it, it, it will be a post pandemic project, um, hopefully, so that there can actually be in-person community meetings and door-to-door -door 
you know, conversations and the like, but also because of, of the um, staff allocations in the Cape Light Compact itself. So the compact ultimately um, would be asked to manage and fund the Cape Wide program. Um, we're still trying to hammer down the details. Once there's, once we can describe it, um, the plan is to go to the energy committees in each town and ask for the energy committees to support the plan. In Yarmouth, it would presumably be a follow-up to solarize Yarmouth because it's coming in the, the year after. Um, um, but that's, so, so that's probably coming early next year from the Cape Light Compact to all of the energy committees. The two petition articles, I think everybody's familiar with at this point. Um, we did present them to the Board of Selectmen last month. Um, they were interested in knowing what the Energy Committee's position was and we said basically, we'll tell you next month. Um, and um, since that meeting, the consensus emerged to offer amendments to each article um, on the resolution that primarily is about endorsing Solarize Yarmouth Plus, we propose to delete the paragraph about the Old Kings Highway District, simply because it became clear at a meeting with the Old Kings Highway District that Joyce and Sheila and I attended a week or so ago, that there would be so much pushback from the Old Kings Highway Committee that it would entirely distract the conversation about Solarize. And the original purpose of this article was to present Solarize to the town meeting um, and you know, get a manifestation of community support. So we're gonna just delete the Old Kings Highway issue, um, come back to that somewhere else later. Um, on the article that would require the town to get a net zero design option on any future public building project, um, Selectman Stone, I think it was, specifically asked that we, we add language to the article clarifying that the article did not obligate the town to adopt the net zero design. Um, and that was never the intent. The intent was always to get the information and then let the town make an informed decision. So we're going to offer an amendment which expressly says this article is not meant to ob require the town to adopt the net zero design once it has the information. Um, Otherwise, um, we are hoping that the Energy Committee will express its support for these articles on the floor of town meeting. Okay. Um, and I, okay. I've, go ahead, Susan. Oh, so did the select, I think I'm not quite understanding. So did this come up at a select board meet? So, oh yeah, so Michael Stone, yep, so they, so they did. So they've now, um, addressed it. And so now we can, um, I can make a motion that we vote on supporting this bylaw effort. Is this the right time to make that motion? Sure. Okay. So I make a motion that we consider voting for, um, voting in support of these two bylaws. Is it there one, two, what? Oh, one at a time. Which, which, whichever Let's, the committee prefers. Yeah. Um, let's start maybe with both, so we could and find out if if we have to break them apart. I think what we're saying, what the proposal would be, I mean, the support is that there is a climate emergency, and we we understand. So the Yarmouth Energy Committee understands there's a climate emergency, and we're supportive. The Yarmouth um, can, who is putting these bylaws before the town of Yarmouth, and we encourage the town to to support these bylaws, which would help us respond to the climate emergency. Now, the two articles that you have um, both have a change, and it seems to me that the the solarize article, the one that mentions energy committee and, and climate and so forth, has with the um, amendment now 
that will happen at town meeting has removed the controversial part, or at least what this committee seemed to find um, controversial last time. Like there's now nothing about Old Kings Highway that will be in it when it's voted on at town meeting because there'll be an immediate amendment to it on the floor. Um, so with that one, you should look and number two is just gone if you're looking at your copy. Number two was the urge the Old Kings Highway part. And with the, uh, the second one, the one on capital facilities, there's been um, a little bit of a tweak because the, uh, it seemed that not everybody was totally clear on Board of Selectmen that they weren't required to do the net zero sustainable building. And um, Barry, did you read the bylaw amendment or should I on that? Well, I did send everybody on the energy committee uh, the text of the amendments and the text of the wow. articles as, as they would read if, as amended on Saturday. So I think okay. folks have this, but I'm happy to read it if, if that's helpful. Okay, maybe if you could, could read just the um, amended part to the uh, um, capital expenses article. Sure, so it simply adds a, a subsection that application of bylaw, the purpose of this bylaw is to assure that the decision of the town regarding any future capital facilities project is fully informed by the thorough evaluation of alternatives and nothing in this bylaw shall be construed to require the town to select a compliant design recommendation for any capital facility project. The language refers back to the prior language of the article, which defines those things, but it says that it mm -hmm. does not require the town to select the compliant recommendation, which would be the net zero recommendation. Now, it was my reading of the original um, proposed article there that that was already in there, but it wasn't like it wasn't jumping out at selectmen. So this is just a kind of reassurance, right? Yeah, I mean, I think Mike agreed that it didn't on his face require it, but he felt it would be wise to say that expressly so that there would be no ambiguity. So we, we adopted the language he requested. Okay. Uh, Barry, uh, question. Uh, did, when you sent that in, that uh, those changes out, did you uh, in, send it to the uh, selectmen as well? Did you or uh, Dan? Uh, yeah, to both, all of them. Both. Um, okay. So they have yeah. that. Yeah. Sure. So I mean, I, my sense was they weren't going to vote on their position on the petition articles until probably the day of the town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it just okay. hasn't come up yet. They have, they have one meeting before then on November 10th, but they may just vote in that that meeting that they always have in the hour before uh, town meeting. Yeah. Should we uh, discuss how these are gonna get presented at the town meeting? Well, that's separate from energy committee. So maybe we wouldn't get into that here, but... Um, this is a question of whether Energy Committee, as a committee, wants to endorse these. Yes, yeah, so and I, I made that motion. I don't know what the next step is. It's to get okay. Us so we've had some explanation. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay, Bob. Um, now, do you want to uh, have some discussion on the motion? What are people feeling about this? Other than I know it's election day and it's hard to concentrate. Yeah. Well, the, I would, uh, the, I would the, support the uh, the motion uh, and just make clear that uh, you know that the amendments uh, do apply to the uh, to the motion. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. If, if I can suggest that you know the language should be to su to support the petitioned articles as amended. Um, as presented to the committee with amendments. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. The, the uh, second uh, article that's being uh, put up there not, uh, basically says that uh, the energy committee is gonna continue to pursue the plan that they put in place. I mean, it's, it's almost one and the same. Now with the uh, old Kings Highway, 
paragraph taken out of there. Right? Does everybody it, agree? It, it does seem incredibly um, confluent with your vision of what we should be doing, Mike. Yeah. Do you want a footnote? Do I want a footnote? Yes. What? No. What on the? Yeah. No. No. Sandy, think, how about you? You had the concern about it going not being a surprise to the select board, and now here we are post the select board. I am for it right now with the amendments. I had read them all that Barry sent the other day, um, and I am in favor of it and do not have any objections at this time. And I really appreciate your efforts in getting it to the selectmen so that they were aware that this was happening. I just didn't want them to be blindsided. Yeah. Okay, Sandy, thank you. And it was fun. You know, those meetings are fun. Oh boy. And Bob, how are you doing? Sorry to be jumping the gun here, but I just know, I'm thinking this might, I just wonder, Bob, where are you at? Oh, Bob's for it. He said Bob. he was. Oh, oh yeah, I, I seconded the motion. Yep. Uh, yeah. Great. Can I call the question? Okay. Take a two-thirds vote. Uh, is there a second to call the question? Yes, second. Okay. Call the uh, all those in favor of calling the question, which would cut off further discussion, say aye. 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 Okay, Marilyn, you want further discussion? Nope, I'm, I'm good with it. Okay, so I guess the question is called then. So it's um, a statement from Energy Committee saying that Energy Committee um, votes to endorse the two petitioned articles and we'll have to insert um, a description there just so they don't get mixed up with the Tom Barron petitioned article. Um, uh, complete with the amendments presented or something like that. that yeah, like just sure. Endorse the two petitioned articles as amended. Okay, as amended. And those amendments will follow on the floor, but I don't think, um, I, I mean, they they will happen, so I don't feel we see any problem with with that, right? Do the articles have a men, uh, numbers yet? Oh, that's a good thought to distinguish them. Yes, they do. As a matter of fact, um, Barry, I think these are fourteen and fifteen. Is that right? I haven't seen. Is the warrant uh, warrants public? now out? Yep. Okay, I, I, I just. Yeah. Okay. Figure Joyce will will double check on the numbers and insert the um, the article numbers, and that'll make it clear which energy ones we're we're supporting. Okay. So a vote. Um, energy committee votes to en endorse the two petitioned energy articles numbered X and Y uh, as amended. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Okay, carries unanimously. I forgot yeah. to say that with Zoom, we could all do the little hand raise. I hope you're not disappointed. Yeah. We could still hey, do the I hand say, raise. Can I say one thing? Yes. Which is, um, I think this is a great example of us not forcing ourselves to all agree on things at the beginning that we really can have diversity of opinion and um, strong expressions and, and just be, we can have diversity here and come out with a better answer than we would have if somebody had stayed quiet when they weren't um, on board. With it. So it's good team development. Yes. Well, we, everybody's voice is important here. Yes. Okay, so let's see, on to the next agenda article, Solarize Plus. We've dabbled in it, now we go for it. Okay, uh, last week we had a, the CEC put together a joint Zoom meeting with, uh, with us, Melth, 
the town of Melrose, Newton, and Menden, Upton. <laughs> and, uh, I think two of those towns were in because they're doing a mass smart program, and one was uh, still doing their solarized program. I think that was true. At any rate, the main takeaways from that meeting were <laughs> that they found lawn signs were very effective in uh, getting the message out and put them on both private and public property. By putting them on the public property, it shows that the town is backing that. Uh, a letter from either the mayor or the board of selectmen to targeted residents was also effective. Postcards to targeted residents uh, was effective. And that's where I'm saying that uh, we could perhaps get leads from the Cape Light Compact on their energy audits and also maybe from electric vehicle owners if uh, Bob is, does a good job on tracking those down at the uh, charging stations. The, uh, we also, um, they found that res residents who were renovating their homes, uh, which you could find out by going into the permit office, I guess, and see who's gotten a recent permit to do re such renovations would be a, uh, another possible list of potential customers. They also did door hangers and included flyers and water bills. Uh, wasn't a real indication as to how valuable that was. They publicized the first installation, which they thought was a very good idea. Uh, so that people know that the program is up and running. Their kickoff meeting was virtual uh, and indications, at least from Lisa from CEC were that um, the, the result of the virtual uh, kickoff meeting, the in installers who had conducted a virtual and had been in the program in the past, didn't seem to think that was much of a hindrance on doing it virtually. Now, we need to be prepared to pull together our RFP by the middle of December. And when we do that, we want to make sure to include the three or four of the Yarmouth specific criteria, which we thought would be the most important. I think CEC would like us to, I know we turned in a list of, there must have been a couple dozen, I don't remember. It was a pretty long list, but uh, I think that like us to restrict that to what we think are the three or four most important that would be the most useful. So we all <coughs> mentioned with uh, Sandra a little bit, bit ago about the, um, the logo and the website that uh, things seem to have bogged down with uh, Angela, is that her name? Angela. Uh, I, I gave her a feedback on the logo, which I think we, you know, we should be pretty close to having that done. It would, be, would have been nice to have it by the time of the uh, town meeting, but we'll see what happens. So that's all I have on that. Joyce, you were involved in a lot of those calls. Have you got anything to add? Yeah, um, the, thing, the yard sign thing took me very much by surprise. Um, I never thought of yard signs for this. But um, the, the feeling with the towns that had done that was it got the logo into people's minds and it got them used to the idea. So they were less wary of the idea and who might be doing it and, you know, whether there was a, a potential for them to be um, ripped off or, or exploited. I mean, they... It was it was an important thing for establishing legitimacy that that there were houses with lawns that would give these space. Um, the other thing was more predictable, like that a letter from the mayor to every household helped. But I think it would be a really long haul for us to flip the system, get our first mayor elected and get a layer, a letter from said first mayor just to do solarize. So, Mike, we're going to proceed without the mayor's letter, right? Uh, well, yeah, we'll go with the board of selectmen. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Maybe we get Mark Forrest to send it. Oh, that'd be a possibility. Well, will he still be the chairman? Is he going to hold two positions? I don't know. He was doing work for Brewster while he was on the board at uh, Yarmouth, wasn't he? And he's been publicized as saying he's 
uh, going to enjoy doing both positions. Sh shall he get elected tonight? Uh, the other thing is, I think <laughs> if indeed we're going to uh, make this mid-December RFP, I will uh, think that we will have to start having a, a meeting or two of the Solarize troops. So I'll think about putting together a request to do a Zoom meeting one or two during the month of November, uh, one in November, one in early December, so we can get lined up on that. Hmm. Okay. And all of us here wish that we had bought Zoom stock in 2019. Wow, is that company doing well? <laughs> okay. Um, anything else on Solarize, Mike, or should we consider nope. that a wrap until we have the two Zoom meetings? It's a wrap. Okay. Thank you. Um, Susan, you were going to give us a rundown on the Net Zero conference that the five C's Cape Cod Climate Collab Climate Change Collaborative uh, sponsored. Great, yeah, and I've got a couple um, additional updates too. So on that, I just just as we were starting the meeting, I sent you all a link because the Net Zero Conference it we blew away its original hope to get as many as five hundred people, and it actually had closer to eight hundred people. Uh, wow. So it was, it could not have gone better uh, technology wise and uh, participation and the speakers, um, including have done a great job. Um, lots of positive feedback on it, but you can now go through at your leisure and um, watch any and all 30 presentations. So um, I have not watched anything from track A and B, but um because I was focused on track C, which is one of the ones where Barry was facilitating. But Barry, do you have anything to add to that about um, the value of it for folks to go back in and watch it? Well, in particular, actually, the, the most valuable thing I got out of the whole day was that in the Cape Cod Commission presentation, which was part of track C, um, the Steve Tupper, who's their transportation coordinator, actually showed us the results of their um, greenhouse gas emission inventory for the whole Cape, um, which was uh, a lot of data. It is, it appears in, in, as a series of slides in the middle of the video of the Cape Cod Commission whole presentation, the whole thing took an hour. Steve's piece was maybe 10, 15 minutes in the middle but I just did screenshots of those slides because they're not yet publicly available on the commission's own website. Um, and you know they, they, they included things like uh, that surprised me that passenger vehicles are the biggest single source of greenhouse gas emissions on, in contrast to most of the state where, where basically buildings are the main source in on the Cape cars are the main source it's mm. about a third of all emissions um and it it which at least at least offered a way of getting a, a sense of what's the relative importance of cars trucks household electricity household natural gas household heating fuel commercial versions of all of that and it, it's just a, a both in terms of informing how we think about what we need to figure out at the town level um, in terms of the baseline and giving us a sense of scale of the various factors. It's a, it's a great resource. I recommend taking a look at it. Um, we, we, I had the chance to talk with Heather McElroy, who's the head of natural resources for the commission about whether their inventory, whether they could break it down by town, for example, on vehicle emissions and they, I didn't really get a, a direct answer. He thought it would be difficult, I, but I think we'd need to tr track down the folks who actually did the legwork on compiling the data and see if they can help us with town level data. Hmm. Hmm. I just kind of took a note on that and put it in the chat. Marilyn, you could grab that out of the chat if you wanted to, because um, people could go to track C and then to the Cape Cod Commission presentation and then uh, watch Steve's and Barry if you think it's 
something you can share with us, you could just send us the screenshots if you wanted to, or do you think it's, we should just go watch the presentation? Both probably, huh? I put together the, a PDF for myself of the main slides. I didn't reproduce, I didn't, I didn't shoot the whole thing, um, but I'll, yeah. send, I'll send everybody what I've got. That would be great. Okay, thank you. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. A couple other updates and a question is, um, so another thing I put in the chat is from the town visioning. Um, the website is, well, the overall website, I think is everybody's, the staff are doing a great job, but with the town visioning, Thing. They have a climate resiliency data sheet just posted a couple weeks ago. So I listed, I linked that there. And they on it, they talk about um, the energy committee and our strategic plan and um, green communities, but they do not yet know about um, Energize. So Mike, you might want to look at, you know, at that. But everybody should look at what they're considering are the things that have already happened regarding climate resiliency and what's needed. So I think that's fantastic. Um, and then there is the Cape Cod or the Cape Cod Commission stakeholder meeting. I did not make it to the energy um, meeting on that, but I'm going to be in a stakeholder meeting soon and can represent us <clears throat> at that one. Did anybody make it to Joyce? Did you go to the Cape Cod? Commission's energy meeting? I didn't know. In the end, I had a conflict. Yeah, they're doing, a, and there's a, there's a, a possibly other occasions where we can participate, but I'll be doing it in a week and a half and will represent us there. That will be a very good data set to get from the commission too, once they're, they're hearing all of um, Cape Cod's input on what's needed regarding climate mitigation, not just adaptation. So that's important. And then there's the um, the joint base proposal to build a machine gun range and take, you know, deforest uh, the last remaining 170 acres of undisturbed land on the base, on the Cape, <laughs> as well as potentially impact our water supply. And you see things in the paper all the time, but I need to, to, uh, to write a my view or at least a, an article about the importance of everybody paying attention because it's our one source aquifer that's affected here. And I wonder if I should mention the climate emergency for Yarmouth um, and for all the towns is to say, you know, 11 of the towns have already passed uh, this resolution and Yarmouth is about to, and it, it impacts Yarmouth's water as well as all of the mid and lower Cape. Um, are we trying to keep the climate emergency quiet or is this something I really should be promoting? Well, what's the timeline on, uh, what's the best um, timeline for Im uh, impacting the discussion on the on the base? It sounded to me that they were m marching along willy nilly. Is it important that that get out early or? Yeah, um, I just got a email from Mimi McConnell. She's agreed to talk with me tomorrow. Um, so she is, the chair of the Citizens Advisory Committee to the EMC, the group that actually can stop this. They have, mm -hmm. the, they have the decision making right to stop this. So she is, uh, she just won an award for her environmental activism. And so I'm going to talk to her tomorrow. And she said in her email to me today, it's like, did you see the letter to the editor that's in there today, as in today? And she said, there ought to be a letter going in every single week until um, the next meeting, which is unscheduled yet. Oh. But so we just need to, it's one of those things we need to keep on hammering the fact that we've got um, a real threat to our water supply and to our ability to, to uh, reduce emissions by not <clears throat> deforesting you know, our only undisturbed land. It's extraordinary when you think of um, the way there was um, so much opposition about the water in Lewis Bay be, being affected by vineyard wind. And here's this thing that would affect aquifers for the whole Upper Cape and Yarmouth. And, and it just doesn't seem to be quite the same mobilization. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I don't know if I should just focus right on that or if I should weave in the climate emergency work. So. Um, you know, Sheila and Barry, you've got the most 
involvement with the cans um, or anybody. Does anybody have an opinion about that? I would say do the best timing for the issue you're working on um, and the climate emergency stuff, which is in the beginning of um, the proposal here. If it brings more people to town meeting, it'll be a livelier discussion, even if they're against it. I mean, there's some people, some town meeting speakers that it would be helpful to have against it because like it would help us politically. Yeah. Thank you. Susan, I, the word about the climate emergencies is pretty much out there, the 11 towns. So if you feel uncomfortable about including it, I think the bigger issue is the machine gun range. Um, but I'm certainly no expert on the machinations of town meeting and um, who gets uh, their feathers ruffled when. So. <clears throat> Um, it's a tough decision. I get your point. And I think we probably, those of us who really care about this issue should all be writing. I think uh, Mimi makes a great point. So that might be our next to do as a group of activists is just start, start writing letters. <clears throat> great. Thanks everybody. Okay, anybody have any questions about the uh, uh, Net Zero Energy Conference and Susan? No? I, I would just like to recommend watching the young people and kudos to Jim Wolf for assembling that. I thought they were absolutely inspiring. They're bright, articulate, passionate. Um, for me, it was a great way to end the conference. Okay, now we get to our last um, um, content item of uh, business, which is the Energy Committee 2020 summary for the annual town meeting report. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up now is that um, you felt that you needed more time um, to look at summaries of, of uh, our report. In the past, we've done, um, October reports to the Board of Selectmen. There's no way that fall reports to Board of Selectmen are gonna happen this year. They they have their hands more than full. And of course, one of the big things they'll be doing before the end of the year is, is hiring a new town administrator and a new assistant town administrator after that. So um, I think we should just be aware that it will be a January deadline, usually um, about the end of the first week in January for our text for uh, the town meeting report. And uh, I was writing down some things that we would want to include and see what you think of these. Um, I wanted to mention, first of all, the Energy Committee annual operating plan and give that some detail because that seems really important. And that's like our big news this year. I would also want us to mention the um, Solarize grant and how uh, in uh, 2020, there was work on advanced preparation on that for the delayed launch of the program. Um, it seems like we should mention that Bob's senior project has gotten interrupted by the pandemic, but will we be resuming um, when pandemic conditions stop? Uh, seemed like we'd want to, just as a point of local news, have the update you've been giving us, Steve, on the um, emergency shelter battery at the high school, but also the, the, a hint of the progress on the solar sites that are in town. Um, and then I wondered if we would want to give an indication of the uh, um, number of audits that... Uh, that had happened in the town. Um, that will get mentioned in the Cape Light Compact part of the annual report, but I wondered if we wanted to have a mention of that um, with a little reference over to that. Um, 
that Yarmouth remains very actively involved in uh, energy efficiency and conservation. X many audits performed. It'd be a, you know, a simple one line thing. They want these to be quite short. And then I would say finally that um, um, we would want to mention in a way that didn't take credit for the articles away from Yarmouth Climate Action Network, but that Yarmouth Energy Committee, Committee members as individuals were involved in the effort to get these articles circulated, or at least mention if we didn't include that, the uh, unanimous endorsement that we, that we just included. And we'll know by the time this goes in, um, of course, whether they've passed or not, if that makes a difference with how we word things. Anyway, I thought if any of you had any things that you thought were must includes, I'd note those right now and um, come back to you at our um, December meeting with a rough draft and we maybe give like half an hour or 35 minutes of time just to go over that and to make sure everybody um, approves of it and, and make sure I'm not missing something and all that. Mm -hmm. Joyce, what's the, what's the scope of this? Um, is this supposed to be accomplishments by the Energy Committee or improvements that have been made town-wide for one reason or another, which we may or may not have been included in? And I know you mentioned uh, like YCAN, uh, that wasn't, uh, it wasn't the objective of the Energy Committee, but you, as you said, uh, several members of the energy committee supported that that has that's the same thing with regard to solarize too isn't it it is and i thought that um as long as we carefully differentiate between you know energy committee as a group and individual efforts that this would be a chance for us to give a nice mention to solarize and to wise why can I know, and what about green communities? Not that we're doing much with it, but that there's a lot of progress that's been made because we supported the town on going for that. We could have a little thing. Uh, again, they're, they're trying to trim this really short this year, but maybe we could have um, a thing in there, something like the Energy Committee um, congratulates the town on the uh, uh, November 6th delivery of the uh, uh, green energies community report that makes us possible makes the town eligible for future competitive energy grants, mm. something like that. I mean, so that we're. I, I worry, you know, not all things and not all work is done by energy committee, and I'm always a little shy about anything that might look like we were um, taking credit for something that wasn't us. But if we were congratulating the town staff on that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, another thing I'll just mention in passing here, Joyce, is that the, uh, you're going to be <coughs> referencing the uh, annual operating plan, which has a mission statement in it, very clear, clearly identified as a mission of the uh, Energy Committee. You might want to compare that to what the uh, Yarmouth website currently says the mission of the energy committee is and decide which one is the true mission. Oh, okay. I guess they should be identical. Well, and that's an existential question right there. Okay. Well, that's, I'll that's ask, why I'll I, ask for why extra I, pages, Mike. No, that's why I posed it to you. I, I think that the, the mission statement, uh, as it stood, the one that's on the uh, website, was in dire need of updating anyway. So uh, I think uh, I think that's a, a good idea. Okay, and you know, actually, Mike, you're bringing that up suggests that is a good way in to um, introducing the idea of the operating plan for the energy committee by saying, you know, in 2020, 
uh, the mission was updated and giving it and then like giving a little information about some of the other things that were involved because of that update, you know, some of the tasks that, that we're deliberately taking on. That I might be a, like a nice paragraph in this. I just knew you would be able to phrase that correctly. <laughs> I, I can tell when I'm being humored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and anything else we should think of with that, Madam Secretary? Um, not, nothing I can think of. Okay. Uh, Marilyn, uh, I think I will send you a table of the uh, baseline energy usage data that I had put together and read okay. from so that you can include that in the minutes. Okay. Sandy helped me the last time using CAPTCHA to insert it in. I, I've been I, needing to learn CAPTCHA and see if I could do it without asking Sandy's help again. <laughs> if I send it to you as a picture, is that good? Yes. Okay. And I guess we should also include in the minutes um, the petitioned articles as amended um, since we discussed those. Your call, Madam Secretary. I don't know. I, you know, I've mentioned this before. My experience in my entire career is when any kind of um, minutes or documentation becomes too lengthy, people don't read it. And um, that's, that's my only hesitation, you know, when you begin to have minutes or, or sending out something that's four or five pages long. And um, that's just my, my observation from all the, the companies that I worked in. And I realize that there are times that you want to provide everything. But, you know, I can, I can write it that those petitions were written in sight which um, which minutes they were in and just say what the amendments are if everybody feels that's okay rather than to redo both petitions in full yeah i think the i think the amendments would do it like um just like the amendment to the um solarize and all the different moving pieces the amendment of that is just a scissorsing out of number two which was the old king's highway and the other one is is one we have the text for so that would do it and then you can just state that the uh, the um, original version of the articles appears in um, articles um, 13 and 14 of the town meeting warrant okay rather than refer back to the minutes from the meeting where they were included. Or you could do the document, Marilyn, and include it in a link. Okay. So the document that was sent, I'll help you with including it in a link and, and, okay. and enter That's, it that way. That way it's not making the minutes lengthy. If anyone yeah. wants to go to that link to read it, it's their choice. I do, Does everybody agree with me if it gets too lengthy, it, it lose you lose some interest in it? Amen. Totally. I agree. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. <clears throat> These meetings are being recorded also, aren't they? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So if we need to go back, you know, to understand some detail, we, we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do. I have one question um, for Joyce. I thought I saw a reference that Steve Krinsman has left the committee, but there has been no mention of it so I didn't know whether to continue to say he was absent or to note that he has left not quite official yet okay so okay and I'm still sending him this stuff because he likes getting this stuff but um his his um term ends in December anyway but I'm waiting till um after town meeting to bring up the replacement stuff with the uh, board of selectmen um, because we have um, three appointments. Remember when we were, we had that odd thing where most of us were illegal because they'd let the appointments lapse. Yep. Okay, so we had, there are nine of us and we come up in three. So we have three renewals um, that have to be done for December 31st. And so I thought I would make it part of that 
and um, okay. um, just have one thing, especially since I've, I've been in touch with Dan Horgan, who's the new appointments chair, and I think that would make it easier for him. But he is already um, so proactive that he's already been in touch about this, which is admirable. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, about the three, not about the not about Steve. No. I, yeah. uh, for your information, Energy Committee, after the Board of Selectmen meeting, Dan Horgan called me the next day and wants to get together. So I'm um, supposed to meet with him Thursday. Wow. By the way, I found my original Energy Committee appointment card the other day. <laughs> I knew it was in the house somewhere, Bob. Good for you. I found mine too. <laughs> I don't remember getting a card. Oh, you only nope. get a card from the old days when you were going to collect a pension for your membership. Yeah. So, does so that mean I'm not, I'm not a card carrying member of the Energy Committee? It means you remember, but you know, maybe with fewer benefits. Uh, you know, the the travel budget is much lower for you. So, so Bob's getting twice what I am getting, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the date on mine was 2010. Is that possible? I'm afraid we've been at this for a very long time. Maybe it's time we all retired, you know? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you know which terms expire in December, Joyce? Yes, yeah. And I, I'm going to be calling... Um, the people individually. Here's looking at you, Bob. Um, but I, I do assume they want to be renewed, but I will double check. I, I will not renew anyone without their permission. So do we have any items for future agendas? Any any final comments or or impressions? I have a question um, for everybody. I'm not sure. Are any of you planning on attending the Zoom meeting tomorrow night, the community visioning? I've been yes. trying to pull it up on my other computer. Uh, five, 5.30 tomorrow. Uh, yep, 5.30. Community and visioning. Cool. The community yep. visioning project? I and visioning. I registered for it, Tara. OK. I, yeah, I was just curious. I'm planning on attending, and I just want to make sure everybody was aware. Oh, good. But, I was not, and I've been trying to track it. So if you go on the town's website, on the home page, um, in the top tabs, you know where it says, like, government and... Uh, oh, yeah. There's one, there's a tab there that's for community visioning, and when you click on it, it automatically takes you right to... It's quite an extensive page, and um, there's tons of information in there, and the Zoom link is there as well. Well, that's handy, all in one. Yeah. Are they going to be recording it? I'm sure. I, I, I'm assuming. I, I shouldn't say I'm sure. I'm assuming that. Because <laughs> I had registered for it, but I have another conflict going on, so I'm not sure how I'm going to work that out. I did not register, actually. I, I just um, put it on my calendar and saved the Zoom link. I did. I actually, good for you. I didn't see the registration link. It might not have been a registration. I might have just put it in my Google calendar. And for me, oh, okay. I, the Zooms that I, have. I, I think okay. I remember registering yeah. for it, but I could yeah, be wrong because I, I, I register for a lot of webinars. Same with me. Yeah. I see it as with a registration link to it. The, uh, the thing that I like on registering for a lot of these is you register and it'll put it in your. Uh, on your Outlook calendar with the link and everything. Right. So that's, that's how you know you registered for it and you just go to that. You don't have to go find the email or whatever that had the uh, URL in it. Yeah. Google does that also. Okay. Well, Tara, thank you for the reminder. I had meant to mention that and I, I did not. And I would have been kicking myself at some point, you know, while I was eating popcorn nervously tonight. And I would have said, no, I forgot. <laughs> because, you know, if we, if we're asked to envision our community and we can't be bothered, then we certainly don't get to complain. Correct. It's not the community we envisioned. That's right. Same thing with voting. Yep. Well, do we have um, a motion to um, to disappear? Is the motion to close our meeting? Yes. That was me. I'll second. Okay. 
All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Goodbye, everybody. Great Bye. to see you. Bye. Have fun watching the election. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Bye. Thank